The trail of the 3rd Army and the 19th Tactical Air Command and the 8th Air Force is marked by more than 40,000 white crosses. 40,000 men Americans. We were young and soldiers called to dedicate our lives. In the name of God and country, do what's just, boys. Go do what's right. A hot band of brothers waiting on our chance to add one more page unto the victory dance. Here am I. of the men who died for me Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said Here am I Send me This is Michael Broder, Marine Corps veteran, actor, and Gallant View board member. You are listening to the new American veteran. Now here's Carl Monger. Hey, welcome to the new American veteran. This is your host, Carl Monger. I'm the founder and executive director of Gallant View, and I am very privileged today to welcome a crew from an organization called Sail Ahead. Hey, guys, welcome to the show. Hello, hey. thank you. How are you? All right, so Killian and Sean, uh, t introduce yourself and tell us who you are. My name is Sean. I'm 18 years old. This is my brother, Killian. We are the co-founders of Sail Ahead. Yep, I'm, and, I'm uh, 20 years old, and uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, tell me, what is, uh, what is Sail Ahead? And I see you got a American flag folded behind you guys. Uh, I know you recently did an event that honored a 2nd Ranger Battalion veteran. That took his own life. So j tell me about and how you guys got into that. Sure. Uh, so Sail Ahead is a nonprofit organization. We started back in the winter of 2013. So we're out here uh, in Long Island in New York. And uh, what we did, what we do is we take wounded veterans out sailing as a form of therapy. So the way that we started this is we wanted to invite the community sailing and um, Around this time, we also learned that at least 22 veterans commit suicide daily and also one active duty. So we thought this was absurd because how can people go overseas and sacrifice so much and then come home and be treated as such that they feel that they are, uh, they feel the need to take their own lives. So we figured we always have one extra spy on the sailboat, might as well take a veteran sailing. Worst case scenario, we meet someone new and we, uh, and so we tried that. And the first veteran we took out sailing was from Vietnam War. And he was 100% handicapped because of his PTSD. And for 20 years prior, he had been going to therapy to treat him. And uh, after that sail, in the winter, mind you, <laughs> which uh, over on Long Island, sometimes the bay freezes completely over some winters. So it, it gets intense. And we're on 16-foot boats with an older gentleman from the Vietnam War. Already the context is not what you would expect for a therapeutic sail. <laughs> and yet, at the end of the sail, when we got back on the beach, the veteran began crying and he gave us all a hug. We didn't know why he was crying, so we cried also. We Again, we didn't know why. And then uh, he told us that was the best therapy he's ever had. So from then on, it kind of just grew. We realized the potential of healing that sail had had, and we, we kind of exploited it to help others. Now, that's absolutely amazing. Uh, but tell me, how did you guys decide to start a nonprofit? I mean, or well, let me back up even further beyond that. How long have you two been sailing? We've been sailing all our lives. Uh, our parents are sailors. We're sailors even before we were born. And they tell me that as once I was born, you know, like six months into my life, they already took them. They took me with them sailing uh, when they would go out. You know, so I was kind of dead weight back then, obviously, <laughs> uh, adding you know like ten pounds, but. Mm -hmm. Um, ever since then, you know, growing up, we learned on smaller boats, we worked our way up, you know, and 
and we just got to experience three years on the water. So. so did you start Sail Ahead to as a nonprofit to help veterans, or did you start Sail Ahead just as a nonprofit? Well, we, we started Sail Ahead to help veterans, and two years into our sailing with veterans, we realized that it's a really good idea for us to start a nonprofit because up until that point, our family has been paying for all the boats and all the mooring fees, and anytime something breaks, we would pay for it. And uh, we realized that if we want to grow, it had to become more self-sustainable. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, it just started off with, hey, we, you know, there, there's this group of people that need help. We have an extra spot on the boat. Let's take them out. You know, and we wanted to get more people involved with sailing in our community. And uh, when more people got involved, more people wanted to help. People, other people wanted to donate to us, and we were like, you know, we, we won't accept donations. We can't. And uh, and then uh, when we realized, you know, this was picking up and the potential was immense and all the lives we were touching were, you know, I mean, all the experiences we were giving were life changing. And uh, that's when we decided to take it a step further and make it a nonprofit. Yeah. And that at that moment, a couple years ago, that's when we decided to, you know, before I, I would sail and just race, you know, but but that's when I, that's when we decided that. We dedicated our. We would start dedicating our sailing careers to sail with veterans. Yeah, bear in mind when we started this, I was fourteen and Killian was sixteen, so I didn't even know what a nonprofit was or yeah. meant. So uh, we had no intentions of making an organization out of it. We just wanted to help out a couple of people who we saw were in need of something. Uh, any veterans that are in your family? What, what was your connection to veterans? How did you become aware of the issue? So we. Uh, on my dad's side, uh, before my dad, he's French, we have a lineage of warriors. But really the reason why we got into this is because uh, we heard on the news that statistic, 22 a day. And then we, uh, we started researching and we do have a neighbor who's a Vietnam veteran and he, uh, he almost never talks about his experiences. So we know that, we knew from uh, early on that uh, some some people who experience some of these things really do um, have some trouble in some fashion. So, but tell me a, a couple of things that they've told you that they benefit from sailing. What does it do for those veterans? For when we first start, I mean, it, for example, it depends on the sailing. So sailing can can vary. It can give you a variety of experiences. Sailing in the winter in extreme conditions is very attractive because, uh, as I mean, as you know more than us, I mean, being in the being in the military, uh, you're trained at such an extreme height of of awareness. You're you know you're trained to to an extreme level, and and sailing in extreme you know wind, cold, uh, you know in wavy seas. I mean, veterans seek that. And, uh, and that's what's so attractive. You get your adrenaline pumping, and that's something that people in the military are used to. Um, and uh, that, that's so sailing in the winter gives you that adrenaline rush, gives you that excitement and the, the physical activity that people need. And then uh, with that comes the camaraderie because uh, when you're on a boat sailing, you need to work together as a team to get the boat moving. And uh, and to get across the finish line or get to the de destination that you need to get to, um, yeah. At the same time that uh, a sailing can mimic a high intensity moments, it can also provide you with like an escape, a simple, you know, sunny day. You just go out on the water and it's incredibly relaxing. So for the older generations, they like to be able to go out and just, you know, chillax. <laughs> For some of the younger generations, they really need an outlet to uh, to escape, to really get rid of some of their pent up energy. Yeah. So, for example, that we just had an event in Tacoma, Washington, for uh, an army. He was a ranger of Second uh, Battalion, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this up here on the screen so uh, everybody can see what you're talking about. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, talk to me about this. Tell me about this. Yeah, so this year, Sailhead is dedicating um, our events to uh, Specialist Ryan James Day. And his case of PTSD was a little different from others because as, uh, as all the Rangers, they're trained um, to basically operate under extreme chaos, right? And, uh, and so 
after a couple of deployments, he came home and uh, not knowing what to do with all this energy that he had pumped up and no outlet to, uh, to expend that energy, he, you know, gambled with his life and he lost. So um, it, PTSD has uh, changed um, or we, we're more aware of different types of PTSD. In Ryan's case, he just needed an outlet for all this dopamine that he was getting from his brain even though he wasn't doing anything. So sailing is that outlet uh, for many. And so um, it, it helps both, as Sean said, to calm yourself when on the water. I always say that when I'm sailing, you know, I don't worry about that math exam that I just flunked. You know, I'm out there on the ocean. It's just me, my boat, my crew. Um, and then if you need to burn some energy, that's also a perfect way. I'm going to pull up your uh, Facebook page page and show people that would you tell them this is on it and uh kind of how they can find you guys how they can support you yeah sure should, uh should be able to see that now yeah yep so uh if you're trying to contact us you could go to our website or to our facebook page www.facebook.com forward slash sail ahead and uh on on facebook we try really hard to keep everyone posted on what we're doing so like Killian said we had an event in Tacoma which is uh, the reason we had the event in Tacoma was that's where Ryan took his life he was stationed there when he took his life so we decided what better way than to honor him by having an event there and so we did and we had nine sailboats one powerboat attend it took place at the Tacoma Yacht Club where we invited a lot of rangers some who knew Ryan some who didn't and um, the purpose of this event is to connect the community of sailing with the local civilian community community, and uh, the veteran community. So the reason why we do this is because um, there are many, many veterans. In our county alone, there are 79,000 veterans. That doesn't mean that all of them are in need of therapeutic help, but quite a significant population is in need of therapy in some fashion. So. We don't want, first of all, we don't claim to be medical experts. <laughs> we only go on based the, of the testimonials of the veterans who have sailed with us and have given us some positive feedback. But we, uh, we cannot, we simply, simply put, we cannot take everyone sailing because <laughs> my dad's boat is only 42 feet and uh, doesn't fit 79,000 vets. But that's not the point, is that we want to connect the veteran community with the sailing community in hopes that they can become friends and just go on sailing on their own. Yeah. And, oh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. And, and I was just going to say, I, I pulled up your uh, your webpage here. I'm showing that to everybody now. There's a donate button right at the top, the red, red and white donate button. So I'm going to encourage people while they're here, go hit that donate button. Yeah, watch, watch this. I'm going to put the link on the show when I broadcast it as well. So support this effort. Uh, what you guys are doing is pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you. And Sail Ahead first started as just us taking veteran sailing, you know, but it's really grown from that. And uh, in the military, um, when someone's deployed, when someone's in the service, it's not just that person that sacrifices so much, but so do their families and their loved ones. And last year we were joined by uh, our mates and our mates are 219 veterans and active duty members most of whom have taken their lives and we have their name tags with us and we carry them wherever we go, wherever we sail, they're with us. And it's a way to raise PTSD and veteran suicide awareness and to uh, honor and remember these men and women. Yeah. Um, so if uh, 22 veterans are committing at least suicide daily in the United States, that means in 10 days you have at least 220 deaths. So we carry 219 name tags to show that that one that's missing is symbolic of the one that we are attempting to save. And we just had an event Sunday uh, out of Centerport Yacht Club with around 50 boats and uh, about 190 veterans plus guests participating. And um, what I did was I gave a speech before we all went out sailing. And uh, during that speech, I asked 219 people to go to the center of the field. And I showed everyone that that is 10 days worth of suicides. So when you say 22 a day, 
people understand that there's something grave about it, but they don't quite connect the dots. So in showing them that that visual, they can really grasp how how profound this issue is. And well, you guys are really you're advanced beyond your age. Your maturity level is awesome. Uh, thank you. What you're doing in service and things that uh, keep in mind and educate people when you talk to them as well. The VA's study that they released last year says that suicides are better over the age of 50. Take that Vietnam veteran out. You know, there are a lot of big organizations out there that won't help veterans that are before 9-11. And, uh, and, and the older veterans are the ones that are at greater risk for suicide than the younger veterans. So keeping that focus on them, that's, that's a great job. Yeah. Well, and, and we deal with veterans of all ages. Like we just got back. I mean, we just did that event in on sunday and we had a couple we had uh yeah a couple world war ii veterans korea vietnam uh iraq afghanistan i mean the average age of our mates is 26 years old so um we we deal with a wide variety of veterans and the family members this year um i mean we're in contact with the family members of our mates and uh we sailhead was able to raise enough money to uh, fly in from across the country, six different family members of our mates. Six families of our mates were at the event on Sunday. And, and the uh, families came from states like Florida, Louisiana, Missouri, uh, Colorado. So yeah, and, and, uh, and the whole goal, the whole idea is to get the sailing community, civilian community, and military community, including their family members together and to fight for this common cause because, um, you know, when, when, when somebody in your family, you know, takes their life, there are more than, you know, more than one person affected and more than one person is hurt. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, so what, what I say sometimes is let's be real. Uh, America is not at war. It's the soldiers and their families that are at war. Right, because if you take World War II, the country was at war. We were all sacrificing something. We we were rationing or taking scrap metal and bringing it to the yards. But in, in reality, I am virtually unaffected, except for what I do with Sail Ahead. Before that, I was completely unaffected by the wars that are currently going on. So, if a family loses a loved one, whether it's killed in action or at home to a self-inflicted casualty, uh, it's almost impossible to relate with someone. And as humans, we are very social. So we need this kind of comfort. So for these families, they feel completely and utterly alone. So that's why we fly them over. And we don't fly them over and stick them in a hotel. We fly them over and we put them in houses, like up and down our street, because this demonstrates further that we are a community and we're here for each other. We care for you. So instead of being alone in a hotel room, they're living with the family across the street from us. This way they can understand that, wow, there's some people that care. So it, it, it helps them in the healing process, but it also, it, it also helps to spread awareness throughout our community of what they're going through. Because our neighbors, prior to this event, some of them had no idea about the 22 a day. Now they do. And also they're able to share the love back to the families. So this event Sunday was to honor Ryan James Day and all of those like him. Yeah, and on our when is your next uh, when's your next event? In um, in ten days, it's on the south shore of Long Island. It's going to be similar to the one we had at uh, Center Port Yacht Club last Sunday. It's uh, we're going to have twelve sailboats there. We're going to fill them with uh, veterans and guests, and the same thing: raise PTSD, veteran suicide awareness get people involved on the water. And, uh, you know, our goal is, again, we're only two kids with our, when we dragged our family involved. And uh, I could tell you my parents didn't really like it. Every time we'd say, oh, we, we broke something or, you know, we, we need more money from you. So, um, but the, the goal is to get more sailors involved. And even though, you know, we don't need all of New York or Long Island to be a sail ahead, um, you know, operation going on. But if sailors can meet a veteran and let's say they connect and they, you know, then af even after the event, they can still go sailing, you know, and that's the goal. We have six programs 
at Sailhead. And each one is designed for a different, each one has their own purpose. We have a keelboat certification team, and what we do with that is we try and certify 15 veterans to sail a basic keelboat every year. And the goal with that is they learn sail so that they can have their own sailboat and they take fellow veterans sailing. Um, we're just two young kids or civilians and we can only connect so much with a veteran. Last year at our event, um, or our first annual event at Center Pool Yacht Club, we had a, a Vietnam veteran who uh, received two Purple Hearts and he was skippering his own sailboat. And on board he brought um, a Marine from, uh, he served twice in Afghanistan and once in Iraq, and they connected immediately. And they, the Vietnam veteran afterwards admitted that, you know, he's never really opened up uh, about his war experiences in Vietnam until that day. Day. Yeah. Until, until that day. And it just goes to show that, you know, all walks of life, doesn't matter your age, which war, there's so much similarity all over the place. And we're just trying to make those connections. You know? Yeah, Killian said something. I just want to clarify it. The Vietnam Absolutely. is a member of the Yacht Club. So we didn't train him. He's just a sailor. And uh, we, we met him while we were planning the event. And we knew the Marine beforehand. And we thought that they would make a good pair. So we assigned him to the Vietnam veterans boat. And they just they did a, a world of healing for both of them. And that's that's a, outstanding, guys. Very, very good. So again, tell me your uh, Facebook page and your website. So uh, the website is www.sailahead.org, and Facebook is www.facebook.com forward slash sailahead. That's sailahead on Facebook. Awesome. Uh, you guys are you guys are amazing. Thank you for what you're doing. I want to check in with you, maybe hearing about do an update and see how you guys are doing. Sure. Thank you, thank you, I yeah. want to thank you for, I want to extend my personal thanks and that of the veteran community for the work that you're doing. It's important work and uh, kudos to you for taking it on. And also thanks to your parents for supporting you and helping you uh, in the early days when it was coming out of their own pocket. Yeah. And thank you, Carl. I read a little bit about you online and the things you do as well is, I mean, we're on the, we, I'm sure we're on the same boat. We help, all sorts of people and uh, yeah. we might not be able to change the world, but you know, we can change uh, and help uh, someone's world. Yep. Yeah, there you go. So, so well, each one of the guys that goes on each guys or gals, each one of the veterans that goes on your, I would like the opportunity to connect them with a mentor. And if there's somebody like the Vietnam veteran who, who belongs to the yacht club, assume from that, that he had a, a fairly successful transition was, did okay in his uh, civilian career and to have him to connect him with a, a younger veteran, like you pointed out the, the the connection is immediate and it's very important. It's healing for both of them. And we try to create those connections with veterans all across the country. So any veterans that come on your program, we'd love to get the opportunity when, when they go back to wherever they live, we want to connect them with them. They're never alone. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you again, Carl. Thank you. Guys, thanks for being on the show. This is uh, the New American Veteran with Sail Ahead. Thank you for having me.
That beautiful rendition of TAPS is a public domain recording created and recorded by an employee of the United States government. It is open source and not under copyright protection. Kenny Thomas song Send Me is used by permission of Kenny Thomas. Isaiah 6, 8 was read by Tim Abel. Thank you, Michael Broderick, for the introduction. All work is original or used by permission. This has been a production of Gallant Fuse, the New American Veteran, a member of the Heroes Media Group, all rights reserved.